Viewers, over the last few days, pro-hijab vested interest driven to desperation by even the High Court's reluctance to give interim relief to their pleas have begun to plumb the depths of logic in their desperation to make a case for the hijab viewers. Priyanka Gandhi Vadra cluelessly championed the right to choice in school, saying that bikini, burqa, it doesn't matter, but no one can be forced into observing a dress code. Priyanka Gandhi Vadra's iterations became instant grist for the Twitterati, who turned out one sarcasm-laden meme after another to mock the high priestess of the Congress party. Obviously, no one told Priyanka Gandhi Vadra viewers that school children can't be allowed to wear bikinis to schools that prescribe a dress code. Also, of course, no one told Priyanka Gandhi Vadra that all ladkis, as she calls them, aren't as privileged as her and therefore lack the independence and agency to stand up to patriarchy or the local mullah's regressive injunctions. But just, viewers, just when no one thought that it could get any worse, a legislator in Karnataka called Zamir Ahmed from the Congress party has gone one up on Priyanka Gandhi Vadra shocking women, outraging women across the nation. Ahmed has said that the hijab means parda in Islam and women get raped when they don't wear the hijab. Even when it was pointed out to this misogynist that he was, through his utterances, almost handing out a license to would-be rapists Ahmed didn't take back his words. In fact, he went on to only justify a shockingly misogynistic stand by adding, and I quote him, that India has the highest number of rape cases in the world. What is the reason? The reason is that they don't cover their face, unquote. This is what Mr. Ahmed of the Congress party that is today led in part by Priyanka Gandhi Vadra has said, viewers, now listen to the Congress MLA yourself. If you don't believe me, listen to him. You can't believe, viewers, that in the 21st century, you have individuals like this sitting in your legislative assemblies, viewers, making laws. Listen to this man. हिजाब मतलब मुसलमान के अंदर इमाम के अंदर वो शाह पर्दा बोलते हैं वो शायद उनके घर में औरत बच्ची है नहीं मालूम है मेरे को अगर औरत बच्ची होता तो मालूम होता था ये हिजाब रखने का मतलब क्या है ये हिजाब क्या औरत बच्ची जो होती है जो बड़ी होने के बाद जो है उनको गोशे पर्दे में रखते हैं उसकी खूबसूरत आगी होती है अब उसकी खूबसूरत दिखनानी चाहिए उसकी खूबसूरत छुपाने के लिए वो रखा जाता है आज आप देखे होंगे कि हिंदुस्तान के अंदर मेरे ख्याल से रेप रेट जो है वो सबसे हाईएस्ट हिंदुस्तान के अंदर है वजह क्या है ये गोशे पर्दे में नहीं होने की वजह से The legislators reprehensible views sum up all that is wrong with the position taken by so called liberals and political parties that like to think that they are also so inclined by agitating for the hijab, they are in a sense saying, viewers, that women are to blame for any unwelcome overtures because they invited the male gaze by not exhibiting sufficient modesty. What do these people want? All women to roam around in chastity belts, corsets, covered from head to toe, as once Malala Yusuf Zai had said, in an inverted tent that appears more like a shuttlecock. Viewers, what do they want? Women never to step out of their homes, never to leave their abodes unchaperoned by a male, never to celebrate their own physical identities. What do these people want? By putting the onus on women, 
not only are men and women like Ahmed and Priyanka objectifying the female species, but they're also tacitly signaling to men that it is okay to take liberties with the opposite sex if they think they are, in a sense, asking for it. Viewers, it's shocking. But what is more disturbing is perhaps the total left Latvian silence over the unacceptable rationalization of rape. Viewers, for the sake of Muslim male votes and for the sake of painting the BJP in fascist Hindutva colors, women are being thrown under the metaphorical bus. Can this ever be forgiven? This is a fundamental question. It's not the first time, viewers, that the Congress has played fast and loose with uh, the sentiments of women. There are several examples, several examples. And this is not the first time that no one has spoken up. This is becoming a pattern because it matters more to oppose the party at the center than to stand up for women. Viewers, let me open this up. I want to begin first by getting into the conversation, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. Dr. Ranganathan, what do you make of this remark by this great Congress MLA? Hello, good evening, Rahul, and good evening to all my fellow panelists. No, this is, uh, you know, the objectification of Muslim women uh, by this MLA. And also, I don't know whether you've heard about what um, our, uh, uh, you know, frequent panelist on Times Now, Mr. Varis Patan, has said, comparing them to mobile phones with anti-scratch guards. This kind of objectification, Rahul, is wholly condemnable, as is this scaremongering on account of rapes being more prevalent than women don't wear hijabs or burqas. I mean, uh, does this man at all follow data? India has less rapes per women population than many Middle East countries, where Islamic dress code is compulsory. And also, 95% of rapes are committed by relatives and friends known to the survivor. But you know, here again, in condemning the Muslim clerics or these politicians who are making such misogynistic, patriarchal statements, we again, I'm afraid, are running the risk of snaring the fundamentalists but sparing the fundamentals. Rahul, I ask you, did this Congress legislator or did Varis Pathan say Muslim women are tilling fields? Did he say men are in charge of women? Did he say daughters should get half of what sons should? The answer is no. It is Allah, the almighty Allah who said this, and I quote, Men are in charge of women by right of what Allah has given one over the other. Those wives from whom you fear arrogance, first advise them. Then if they persist, forsake them in bed and finally strike them. 434. The share of inheritance of the male shall be twice that of a female. 411. Your women are your tilling fields. So go into your fields whichever way you like. 223. Now tell me. Had Varis Patan or this Congress legislator said Muslim women are tilling fields, what would you, Rahul, or what would I have labeled him as? But let me return to the larger issue here, and it is of hijab, and increasingly, Rahul, if I may say so, this phrase, essentiality in religion. I'm afraid this phrase is nonsensical, at least to me, because what is and what isn't essential is subjective, and either at the discretion of the believer, or it has been explicitly defined by Allah himself. So no court can override the commandment of Allah when it comes to ascertaining who is a true Muslim and who isn't. A practicing Muslim who believes in the Sharia and every single word that there is in the Holy Quran is a good Muslim. While a practicing Muslim who drinks, fornicates, supports Muslim women who reject the burqa or the hijab, can draw a portrait of whosoever he wishes to, is gay and is fine with all his fellow Muslims being all of the above, is a bad Muslim. For 1.8 billion Muslims, Allah's word is inviolable. And he himself has said so. Not me or you or the High Court. 3362, 6115, 1827, 634. Thing is, the bad Muslims are Islamophobic. They fear to bring out the commandments of their holy book in their entirety on Jews, Christians, polytheists, homosexuality, apostasy, heresy, dress code, wife beating, blasphemy, because they fear being called illiberal. So they end up condemning and branding as radicals the Muslims who are faithfully following the fundamentals. Because just who is and who isn't a non-believer or a believer has been explicitly defined in the holy book by Allah. 3336, 3132, 824915. Rahul, just 10 seconds. There is no ambiguity. Allah has ordered how women should dress. 
24, 31, 33, 59. And no court can overrule him. Well, let me then ask if that is actually a fact. And of course, that fact still has to be ascertained by the high court viewers. So I'm going to reserve judgment. That is a view that is being expressed by Dr. Ranganathan. But let me bring in uh, Abdul Razak Khan, political analyst and someone who has been closely associated in the past with political parties also. Uh, Mr. Abdul Razak Khan, Muslim women not wearing the hijab, are they inviting rape? No, not at all. Uh, Rahul, it is up to their choice, but the religion mandates uh, women to wear hijab. It is up to the choice of the woman whether she wants to wear it, whether she does not want to wear it. Will you condemn what uh, this uh, Karnataka Congress MLA, Zameer Ahmed, has said? Rahul, he has not said anything wrong, but the way we have uh, you know, understood it is wrong. Wow. Now, just before four days, uh, BJP MLA Renuka Charya said rapes happen because women do not dress uh, appropriately. Because of their inappropriate dressing, rapes do happen. This was just before four days. I am quoting the MLA with his name. His name is MP Renuka Charya. We do not pick up anything what the BJP does. Now, it's a small statement made by Zameer Ahmad Khan. What wrong did he say? He only said hijab ka matlab kya hai. He explained the matlab of hijab. Later he went on to say that by wearing hijab, you can be protected by rape as well. He did not say you definitely will be protected. Those who are not wearing will be raped. I mean, we are just making stories like this. Oh, we are making and stories. The intention was no. clear. No, one second. understand what does he mean. One second. Please. Yeah. Let me let me quote Why viewers just just for the Renuka sake of said? let's for the sake because of he's a BJP man. fair enough we are not understanding what he says so let me just quote him and I want to bring in Shadat Punawal of the BJP he says hijab is to keep women behind veils maybe they don't have daughters in their homes so they do not know hijab is to hide the beauty of our daughters rapes are the highest in India and the reason is not wearing hijab or covering face I don't know Viewers, in what other language can this not be interpreted as an invitation to would-be rapists to go out there and commit crimes and then say, well, well I couldn't help it, Kerala. the woman wasn't covered up. Kya Karenji? She didn't wear her face veil, so we thought she was very beautiful, so we raped her. That is what, viewers, this kind of dog whistle in fact, it's not even dog whistle, it's an invitation, it's a license to rape is being sent. Anyhow, I'm not getting into an argument with you. Uh, Abdul Raza Khan, if you don't, if you can't see the logic or this idiocy, then I can't help you, sir. Let me, let me bring in Shahzad Punawala who wants to respond to you. Amina Sherwani is also there. the Home Minister of Karnataka says that women should not go Sir, am I excusing? If he said so, he's, yeah. no, if he Rahul said so, if he has said so, one minute, to everybody. Mr. 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 Razak Khan, if he has said so, it's inexcusable. Just like this is, two wrongs don't make a right. Now, hang on. Shadat Punawala, would you like yes, to respond? Sir, Your leaders are making the same yes, statement. This man has made it by, by the halabalu. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, Rahul, the only person who deserves to be put up in a burqa or a veil or a hijab to protect us from, their, from his regressive, patriarchal and sexist, misogynist views is perhaps Zameer Ahmed and the ilk that is in the Congress party. There seems to be a pandemic of misogyny and sexism and objectification of women that's prevailing within the Congress party. Look, first of all, Zameer Ahmed, when he says that uh, women's clothing is responsible for rapes, in a sense, he's putting the onus back on the victim or on the survivor, that it is you who has invited the rape, it is your choice of clothing. Then I would like to ask Mr. Zameer Ahmed, why do one-month-olds get raped? By the way, a study was done in 2014 and that study showed that out of all the rapes that take place in India, 48% are of those who are in burqa and like rightly said by Anand, 93 to 95% of the rapes take place by people who are known to the victim or the survivor, thereby implying that it is not the choice of the clothes of the woman that are to be blamed, it is the man and his mindset that is to be blamed. But but instead of blaming the man and the man and the mindset, they are blaming the woman. And this is ladki hu lad sakti hu. But ladko se kon ladega is prakar ke. And this is not the only instance. Rahul, from the same Karnataka, you had an MLA who said 
trivialized rape and said horrible things about rape. You have the Chief Minister of Rajasthan who says that rape cases filed by women are fake and they are not true. This is why rape cases are number one in Rajasthan. You've had the Alwar rape case, the Nirbhaya rape case of Rajasthan, which has been covered up and thanks to Times now, we have been seeing how the evidence was also taken away and destroyed. This is the kind of mindset that prevails where Congress MLAs come out regularly and say that we will make the roads like Kangana Ranaut's cheeks, we will make the roads like Katrina Kaur's cheeks. This kind of obje objectification, commodification of women. Rahul, I did not interrupt anybody. Why am I subjected to this kind of treatment when I am making my point? I hear everybody else's point of view. I do not interrupt. I show the common courtesy Mr. Khan, that is part please, of our culture of debates. I'll Why come back to you. I am subjected to raise my voice instead of having a conversation Mr. Khan, I will come back to you. But if you but are I so, hear, I, no one minute, if you are so agitated this, by what Manohar Lal Khattar and company have said, you then obviously, the anchor will obviously you are, you are you obviously being a hypocrite when you are today respond. standing in defense of this Mr. Ahmed. You can't have your, you know, cake and eat it too. Now, one minute, just now, 30 seconds. Rahul, just to sum up. Yeah. Go ahead. Just to, just to sum up, Rahul, just to sum up. If Priyanka had the had 0.01% commitment to the slogans that she gives on a regular basis in Uttar Pradesh, today she would be asking Zamir Ahmed, to how resign. dare you blame the survivor of rape? Somebody has gone through that mental agony to actually come out and say these kinds of things and he should be allowed to remain within the should Congress Should he be party. sacked? Let's That's the fundamental the question. the theology of this debate. Should today, he be sacked? Ask that those who take... Should the MLA Absolutely. be sacked? Those who speak high Tosif volumes Khan. about women empowerment today are found wanting. Are found wanting. Tosif Khan, should he be sacked? Should this MLA be sacked, sir? Should he be sacked? Simple question. Should this MLA be sacked by Priyanka Gandhi Vardha, who speaks up on behalf of all, as she calls them, ladkis? Not even women. She calls them ladkis, which in itself, viewers, which in itself, let me tell you, it's grotesque. But who is going to drill Rahul sense in into Priyanka Gandhi Vatra, who has lived in an ivory tower for 40 years? Who will? Now, Tosif Khan, should this MLA be sacked? Ours is a country with thousands of people and thousands of thoughts, thousands of choices, and this choice is guaranteed to them by the Constitution. You're talking about women in hijab. Let me start from outside India. Khatija Muhammad Yusuf. Tosif Khan, I'm asking you a simple question. A Should a MLA who I has sworn by the Constitution to Kubra, uphold it, Kubra, like Zamir Ahmed, be sacked there are for saying, no, no, for one are, second, for saying that if women, women don't wear hijab. Do interrupt me, Rahul. No, I'm asking you a question. Not fair. You, you, you have to give me, no, you have given time to everyone who's, who's supporting BJP. You are not giving me time. This is unfair. This is what about you, sir? Raza well. Khan had I all the time. No, of what kind of people are these? From across to the world, in, in athletes, in, in, in athletics. In science, asked a question, in my, in, in, our, in, in music, question. they all wear hijab and they are all successful. Are you saying that you will rob them of their right to cover their face, head, and shoulder? Was that the question? Will you rob their right? Their, will you rob them of their right? Was to that the right? question? Let us take an are example of India. Are you saying if you don't wear a hijab, you are entitled to get raped? Very renowned musician, respected musician. He has two daughters. One of his daughters chose to wear hijab. One of the, the one of his daughter does not wear hijab. Mr. Rahman, so what did Nirbhaya get because she was not in a hijab? What are you trying to say that question? Did Nirbhaya get raped because she was not in a hijab? That's the fundamental question. Women's, the women's uh, choice to wear hijab. Okay, so you Tosif know. Khan, if a woman doesn't wear a hijab... I, I, do, I have not heard anything you have said. You have only said... Tosif Khan, can I ask you a question? Let me repeat my question. Zamir Ahmed, Congress MLA says, hijab is to keep women behind veils. Maybe they don't have daughters in their homes, so they do not know. Hijab is to hide the beauty of our daughters. Rapes are the highest in India, and the reason is not wearing hijab or covering face. Do you agree with this statement, yes or no, Tosif Khan? Mr. Ahmed is speaking in line 
with the yogi uh, with the bjp chief minister <laughs> yogi adityanath who himself once yeah, said that women know, are meant to stay uh, at home women women are meant to do household work there are there are dozens of bjp um, uh, ministers bjp mlas and mps who have said on record in camera okay so because they said it it's okay for congress out, mla to say it to and in fact dresses, to compound it okay to compound it fair enough yes sir yes sir you can't take a position you Today can't take a position is, there are women two wrongs right don't make a right no one here is endorsing anything that anyone else has said i'm asking you as a stand alone statement is this right or wrong i'm not asking you whether this statement should be allowed because someone else has already made a comment of this nature at some other point supposedly or allegedly okay fair enough one minute let me just step in here let me get let me get the views of amina sherwani before that dr ranganathan has been raising his hand yes dr ranganathan go ahead no you know this is something so straight forward tosif bhai please don't interrupt me i just want to say something which is factual rahul you asked me a question direct question i answered it you asked shahzad bhai a question he answered it you asked mr razak and mr tosif direct questions did you see what the replies were koi idhar ja raha hai koi udhar ja raha hai koi hijab ki hua hai अरे भाई आपसे एक सवाल पूछा गया है डू यू कंडेम द कांग्रेस लेजिस्लेटर डॉक्टर रंगनाथन वाई 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 आर वी ट्राइंग टू इवन इलिसिट अ रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम दीज बट फ्रॉम दीज इंडिविजुअल जस्टिफाइंग हु आर जस्टिफाइंग समथिंग दैट शुड नॉट बी पार्ट of the lexicon of any civilized human being and here is the problem rahul this is why i say they spare the fundamentals and snare the fundamentalists but right now ye itne fundamentalists ban gaye moderates ki they are not even snaring the fundamentalists they are agreeing with the fundamentalists that's what i began by saying jo legislator ne kaha wo theek ka that is exactly what i began by saying and i want to bring in amina sherwani amina sherwani you know i i find it uh. startling and i find it disturbing actually that you know let left latians these great advocates of women's lib equality gender equality all sorts of other high fangled virtue signaling words completely quiet on this open rationalization of rape can you explain to tawseef khan and abdul razak khan where they are wrong can you please or or maybe they are right who knows i think everybody is wrong here be it be it the bjp be it the congress or be it private individuals nobody is understanding that rape is not about love sex and desire that men have this uncontrollable desire when they see a beautiful woman and they can't help it and they just go ahead and make forced love to her and that is some kind of very dramatic rape you know boys can rape is about power rape is about hurting the other human being rape is about showing them down and by the way men get raped in this country too one out of 3 children is raped serially in india continuously by people known to them by fathers uncles brothers neighbors caretakers boy children are raped girl children are raped tiny newborns are raped it is a power game that you are weak and i am strong i can do this to you i can destroy you and i can enjoy myself as i destroy you in fact i can only find sexual satisfaction when i hurt you and destroy you and finish you and the hijab is exactly like rape hijab is taking away a woman's identity telling her that these rule books these rule books these religious books tell you to cover your face because you're not fit to be in society because this society is not safe for you and shame we will do you. nothing to make it you. safe for you we yeah, will not we move our asses to make it safe for you we will let it remain as it is all we will do is keep blocking you up like keep rape. putting you further and further and further back and women have brought into they have bought into this story it is like the covid virus the covid virus enters your body and then it takes over and makes your immunity destroy you that is what patriarchy has done to women well look they are not you seem to be suffering from the virus god, called i i god virus. has already helped me 
I, God is there by my side, always helping me. I wonder when God will decide to help you to see some sense. Please don't bring God into this. God has created us and then left us to be. He has said, please use your brain. Please go ahead. Please educate yourself. I'm not going to have. I'm not going to have two trolls attacking Ms. Sherwani for speaking a view which is unpopular in her own community. Just because she has the guts to hold up a mirror, I'm not going to have two individuals troll her on this show. Yes. My view is unpopular in every community. It's every community. They won't take for this, you know. Well, yes. Dr. Ranganathan, very quickly. No, uh, yes, no, I, I think it is unfortunate. I think we have to have some semblance of decorum. We are somehow living in the land of extremes. We have the Congress legislator saying that uh, wearing a hijab saves, saves women from rape. And we have a panelist saying that wearing a hijab is like rape. Please. Uh, how is that also not objectification? So uh, let us it not is. deal in extremes out here. Let us not deal that with is, extremes. It is, it is, it, point taken. The point is, is, viewers, the point is... is that if we don't speak up for civilized progressive values, we are going to have people at the margins warping the narrative in a manner, in a manner that will become wholly unrecognizable under our constitution. And the morality that it, some level or the other viewers, impedes upon us. That's all I can say. We are going to be joined right now by Arif Mohammed Khan and we are coming right back because viewers, Pulwama, that story, that big, very, very important anniversary that we are marking has been sullied today, viewers, has been sullied and I'll tell you why. But first, I want to go straight across to Arif Mohammed Khan, the governor of Kerala, who is uh, going to be speaking to us on this entire controversy, what he makes of it and what is the solution. Let's go straight.